Hi guys, Harry here. I'm here to talk to you today about Ohm's Law, what it is, uh, how it relates to your solar panels, and I know you're just quivering with the anticipation, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. So here we go. Ohm's law. E equal I R. I R. This means I times R. But what are these things? E is electromotive potential. How hard we're trying to jam that electricity down the wire. I equal current, which we measure in amps. We measure E in volts. And current is how many the actual volume of electrons going down the wire. R is resistance. You can't get away from it. Everything has resistance. Some things more, some things less. Even some things we want to have resistance, like the heating elements in your toaster, but most of the time we don't want them to have resistance. They just do. Nothing you can do about it. Even your batteries and your battery bank for your solar have internal resistance. Can't get away from it, and that's why it shows up in the formula. So E equal IR, volts equal amps times ohms. Ohms, named after Georg Ohm, the guy that did a lot of this pioneering work. Now, with a little bit of high school algebra, we can rearrange this formula and say I equal E over R, or R equal E over I. Same formula, if you don't believe it, throw some numbers in there and see how it works out. Um, so just like I R equals I times R, E over R is E divided by R. Most of the time, if we're talking a solar system, we're saying a soul, um, we're saying E is going to probably be constant. It's going to be your battery bank or your solar panel. Um, so you want to solve for I or you want to solve for R. Um, again, we don't usually solve for R in, in systems like this. This is more circuit board stuff, but you can do it. But more importantly, you get a an in kind of an intuitive idea of what happens when you change any one of these. So since E equal I times R, if you make I bigger or R bigger or both of them bigger, then E gets bigger. But if you come over here and look at this, if you make E bigger, I gets bigger. More voltage equal more current, but more resistance equals less current because it's it's inverse, it's divided by. Over here, uh, if you have more voltage, you have more resistance to keep the same current, or if you have more current, you have need less resistance to keep the same voltage. So, um, so you get this intuitive idea of how to work with this stuff. And uh, we're gonna go on to show you how that applies to your solar panels. So, the whole E equal IR thing doesn't really help us a lot when we're talking about systems rather than electronic circuits. But what but we needed that to get to this power. Power is what we're really interested in when we're building an off-the-grid solar. Um, but that's what we're talking about, a solar power system. Power is the ability to do work in a certain amount of time. Um, the more power, the less time you can actually get it done in. So you want to charge your battery bank quickly, you need a lot of power. You can still charge that battery bank with less power, it's just going to take longer. What is power in electronics? Power is equal to E times R. The voltage times the current is the power. But back to that high school algebra, since E equal IR, we can take this IR, replace this E with it, and then we have I times I times R, which is equal to I squared R. The number multiplied by itself is a square. This comes in handy for assessing how much we're losing in various places. Uh, they're both the same. They both give you power, but they, you know, different forms of an equation can be more useful in some situations than others, just like up here. If you want to solve for I, you want this equation. If you want to solve for R, you want this equation. If you want to solve for E, you want that equation, but they're all the same. 
So your solar panels might say, oh, uh, this is a 100 watt panel. Well, that would be the voltage of the panel times the current of the panel, except that they measure these in pretty ideal conditions, which you hardly ever see. And we'll get into that you know, in uh, coming up next. All right, so if you look at the back of your solar panel, or maybe it's on a spec sheet, you'll see some things like this. VOC, which stands for voltage open circuit. So you stick your voltmeter right across the uh, panel with nothing connected to it and point it at the sun, and you will see um, a number. It's gonna be way more than 12. And you're gonna say, wait a minute, this is supposed to be a 12 volt panel. Why am I measuring 22 volts? And the answer is because that's the voltage open circuit with, with the thing pointed at the sun, but no load on it at all. Then you'll see a number like ISC, uh, current for short circuit. This means that if you actually literally connect the two leads of your solar panel together, and we're not recommending you do that, but if you did, you will see the um, current for when the thing is just shorted right together. That's the maximum current that can really flow in this panel. So they give you those as kind of a benchmark, but notice that, you know, if we can now go back up to Ohm's law and our power equations, when the voltage is open circuit and there's no load, current is zero. So when current is zero, power is zero. So that doesn't help us. When the current is short circuited, the voltage is zero. When the voltage is zero, the power is zero. That doesn't help us. So the other specs you'll see are voltage and current at the maximum power point. Now those numbers are gonna be more like 18 and five and a half for a 100 watt 12 volt panel. So again, you're not getting 12 volts out of your 12 volt panel. You're getting 18 at the maximum power point and um, five and a half amps at the maximum power point under ideal test conditions, if you multiply those two numbers together, that's when you're gonna see that 100 that, you were, that we were talking about, that 100 watts. But they measure these under unrealistic um, conditions. They measure them with a lot more sunshine than you would typically see, and they measure them with the panels at a lower temperature than you'll typically see. Solar panels work better when they're colder, but you stick them out in the hot sun because that's what they do, and they heat up and then they don't work as well. So you're gonna see maybe 85% of that 100 watts, which is 85 watts, if you're lucky on a, on a good day. Um, and then of course you have to take into account the fact that it's not always a bright sunny day. But it gets even more complicated than that because the maximum power point moves around. It depends on just how sunny it is. It's in one place under the test conditions, that maximum power point is gonna be in a different place, a different voltage, different current, when it's partly cloudy and it's gonna be in a yet a different place um, when it's really cloudy and all over the place in between those extremes. And this is what a maximum power point controller does for you. It measures the amount of voltage and current coming through your panel and adjusts them to, to put it back on the maximum power point and bring every last watt out of the sunshine that it can do. Now let's go back and look at our P equal IR. Remember we said we can't get away from that resistance. So but how so how and so what's going to happen here is we're going to lose power to our to our resistance, to our little vampire loads that are sucking power away from us. But how do we minimize that? Well, you can see that we're gonna square the I, uh, whereas R is more or less constant. There's probably not much you can do about it. It's the length of the wires and the size of the wires. You can put in bigger wires to reduce R. But what you really wanna reduce is I. Now, how do we reduce I? Oh, I, we come over here and we say, well, to keep the power the same, and reduce, but reduce I, we need E to be bigger. So the higher you run up the voltage, the less you lose to the I squared, because the I is I times I. So you're really benefiting from keeping your current down. Uh, and this is why you might want to take your solar panels and connect them in series to get not um, 18 volts at the maximum power point, but 36 or 
72. And this is why you might want to connect your battery bank into a 24 volt bank instead of a 12 volt bank. Let you keep the wire sizes down. You lose less to, uh, to this, to the uh, power loss formula. And this power loss formula is also the reason that you're not going to get 100 amps for an hour out of your 100 amp hour battery. That's what it means, 100 amp hours, amps times hours. But because of the internal resistance of the battery, you're losing a lot of that to that 100 amp squared, which is 10,000 um, times the resistance, versus where they measure the amp hour capacity of battery is at 20 hours. So at 20 hours, you will get um, 20 times 5 amps. That's where they measure it. At more than 20 hours, you'll get even, you'll even do better than that. You'll get more than 100 amp hours out of your 100 amp hour battery. But the reason you don't at high amperages is because of that I squared. So 10,000 times R for 100 amp flow versus 25, I, 5 amps times 5 amps is 25 times R. So uh, obviously, you lose a lot more to the internal resistance of the battery when you when you crank an amp side of the thing. That, that pretty much sums it up. That's um, how that's Ohm's law. It's how we rearrange the formulas to make them suit us better. It's our power formulas and our specs on our solar panels and why some of these things are important. And with any luck, this will help you with your installation.